everyone welcome back to wildwood cottage and welcome back to wales it's lovely to have you here hope you're all doing well and i hope you're all having a good week sorry i wasn't here at the weekend and last week but i've been quite busy and we have visitors at the weekend on sunday we had people around for lunch from church so i've been really busy getting on with things around here uh, the secret garden's coming on along nicely i'll show you that again on sunday i've been putting some footage together for you so i've been showing you me putting the fence up and uh, the pergola and i've also got some footage of you of what it's looking like at the moment it's coming together really well really pleased with this um i've got a bench in there now and uh, yeah it's coming along nicely today i thought that i'd come down into the veg garden and do some work in here because i've got some leeks to go in i've got some fruit to go in i've built two new fruit beds and uh, i wanted to show you in the polytunnel and show you what's going on in there I've also been clearing the back of the polytunnel and doing that space at the back. So I thought I'd give you a little look at the back of there as well. Just checking no one's around because <laughs> the gate's been going like the clappers today. That Both gates either side of the house have been going like the clappers today. So there must be quite a few people staying in the valley. And uh, yeah, I just want to check no one's around. I've also got the fruit cage to sort out. Now I've taken down the fruit cage. It was a complete not a nightmare. The birds were getting in, the birds were getting stuck. They were having a field day, eating all the currants, eating all the raspberries. And uh, yeah, it was just getting trashed by the wind. So I just decided I've taken it down, but it needs a really, really good sort out. There's bramble growing in there. There's wild raspberries growing in there. The fruit needs a really good prune. It's not had anything done to it for four years. And it's just looking a right mess. So it really needs sorting out. And with having the rats around and just sort of trying to clear out all the little nooks and crannies where the rats can nest, I also want to build some chicken tunnels, as I've said to you in the past. And I've been doing a video putting that together for you of me sorting out the chicken run and uh, it's building them a new house. So that's to come as well before the end of August. I've also been putting together a video for you as well of the roses. I haven't forgotten. I've managed to find the footage um, that I recorded, but not the video that I put together. So I'm assuming the computer didn't save the video that I did. So I'm going to put all the footage together again and re-record that for you. So that's to come as well. I'm hoping to do that for you for the bank holiday weekend at the end of the month of August. And uh, that'll be a nice special for you to watch uh, to take us into the autumn. Because here in Wales at the moment, autumn is upon us. Autumn has come early. As I said to you in last week's video, we're about four or six weeks ahead here. A lot of the roses have come back into flower, but there's only one or two. They're not anywhere near as good as they were last year or the year before. And uh, it's been very disappointing. The flower garden, to be honest with you, has been very disappointing this year. Things have come and gone. The rain has made it that I couldn't get out in the garden to tidy things up. There's weeds everywhere. Some of the plants are up here. I've got a tansy that should be 60 centimetres tall. It's 10 foot tall. It's just grown all the way up. And I had to take it out the flower bed and now there's a big hole. So yeah, there's not much to show you in the garden, unfortunately, because as I say, it's just a complete mess, a complete write-off this year. And uh, I'm very disappointed because I've, I've been putting a lot of hard work in over the last couple of years. Well, over the last three years, really, since we've been here and since I've been building the garden. And this year, I have to say, has been the worst year I've ever had gardening in my life. And I've been gardening for over 25 years. So yeah, it's just been the worst gardening year ever that I can remember in all my gardening history really to be honest with you and I'm looking forward to getting on into autumn being able to get the garden clear get the garden finished and move on and look forward to the next season god willing that I'm still here to enjoy it but uh, yeah everything's moving on a pace as I say the leaves are starting to change the trees have gone really tall this tree here is a hornbeam tree I think it was planted as a hornbeam hedge but it's grown into a tree and it's about 20, 30 foot tall. It's as tall as the house, so it needs bringing down. And my husband's going to give me a hand with that. Once all the sap started going down into the roots, we're going to tackle that and we're going to get on with it. So I will record that for you and show you me topping the tree and uh, getting that organised. I've also got to do the Philadelphias to the side of me because I've got raspberries to go in. And uh, I've got raspberries, yellow raspberries, red raspberries and tayberries as well now i haven't done tayberries before i've got loganberries but i've not done tayberries before so we're going to put them in as well and um, i think i've also got a thornless blackberry to go in so they're going to go in this part here to the side of me and the philadelphia tree that's also to the side of me needs sorting out 
um, for the raspberries to go in. So that's another job I've got to tackle this week. I'm also hoping to get my shed roof done um, because I want that done before the winter because the shed leaks and I want to sort it out so I can use it for vlogging during the winter. Because I've got a log burner in there and it's a nice place to go and sit. I'm going to take the dog with me up there. We're going to let the chickens out outside. And we're just going to enjoy ourselves up in the garden, even in the dead of winter. So that's my plan for that. So there's plenty to come. But what I'm going to do is, in this video, I'm going to turn you around. We're going to have a little look around. I'm going to show you the mess that is the fruit cage. Because you know how I like to be real. I'm not. This isn't a manicured garden by any stretch. I do get people telling me how messy my garden is. Do you know what? I don't care. It's my garden. And uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's home. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to show you the fruit cage and let you have a little look at that. We're going to have a look at the mess that is the vegetable beds. We're going to have a look at the polytunnel, which I've been working hard in. And we're going to have a look at the back of this polytunnel. And I'm going to show you the new spec that's to come for the victory garden uh, for next year. So I'm going to, as I said to you in the last video, I'm going to carry on the uh, digging for victory challenge and the wartime kitchen right through 2025 because with everyone struggling at the moment with the cost of living crisis with people trying to cut back um this year's been a write-off for that as well with all the stuff with my allergies and my health so i'm going to carry on the challenge into next year we're going to look at what we're going to sow as well at some point during the autumn and we're going to get ourselves organized with the digging for victory for next year's challenge so that's the reasoning for me showing you this video today i'm going to show you things that have gone wrong basically just to show you just how real this garden is because it's not my it's not fake it isn't staged this is just me this is just my garden and you either take it or leave it. you either love it or you hate it it's a bit like marmite you either love it or hate it so there you go anyway i'm going to turn the camera around show you what's going on and we'll have a little look around okay so this is the new patch for the raspberries now i did do a video I think it was last year yeah it must have been last year of me redoing the raspberries i put it in the i button on this video for you and you can see me doing the, the raspberry beds because this is pretty much the same and um, but this time i've used an old bed frame as one frame and i've used an old raised bed that i've built out of some wood that i had from my other garden from my veg garden and um, i've put the chicken stuff out of their run in here in both beds and uh, yeah it just needs smoothing out it just needs tidying up and uh, then the raspberries and everything can go in this is the tree that needs sorting out it's got very big and very tall so it does need thinning out it does need some of these big branches cutting back and uh, giving a good prune so i might do that today before i do the raspberries because there's no point in me doing it once everything's planted so yeah these are the things that i've got to go in I've got some yellow raspberries. I've got one. I've got two. I've got three. I've got four. Now one of these died off and it's come, I'm not sure if it's going to come back again. Um, but I'm going to plant it anyway because they always come back from the bottom. This one's come back from the bottom so I'm hoping that one's going to do the same. Um, and then oh i've got five of those so that's good i do like these they have a lovely peachy flavor to them rather than a sweet flavor it's more of a peach flavor um it's quite dis it's quite weird really because you're biting into a raspberry and it tastes of peaches but they're really very nice oh it's wineberry i've got um so i've got two of those and then i've got Summer raspberry, one and two. So I've also got Gordon's Loganberry as well. It's in a bucket. So I'm going to put that in. Um, I think this is just going to be the raspberries. And then I think this one is going to be the Wineberry and Gordon's Loganberry. Um, and I'm going to grow it on a frame. And then along here, I've got my um, hedge, my new hedge. And I'm not sure what this is, but it's got a lovely pink flower on it. Then I've got a willow. Then this one has a beautiful little pink flower on it. Again, I'm not sure what it is. Someone suggested it might be a Waija, but the flower was very delicate. And then I've got another willow. I've got some roses um, and I've got some of that Himalayan honeysuckle that I like as well. 
So there's quite a bit going on in here. There's another Himalayan honeysuckle over there as well. I need to have a good clean house under here. All these fence posts are for building my raised beds at the side of the polytunnel. Um, these ones are the broken ones, which are going to be used for the facing of the beds. And then over there, I've got the posts for doing the front of it, which I'll show you in a minute. The Philadelphus has finished flowering. It did have lovely white flowers on it, but they came and went very, very quickly. And now all these lovely berries have appeared. Um, and the leaves are starting to change. I don't know whether you can tell that, but they're starting to go yellow. Now, this tree goes a beautiful, beautiful red colour. But it's just far too thick. There's just far too much of it. So it really needs sorting out. So that's what I'm going to do today. We've had so much rain. We've had eight months of rain. And consequence is everything's just got really big and really tall. So I need to cut it back. I'm going to keep the shape of it. But I'm just going to take the thickness out of it. And uh, make it a bit easier to manage. Um, these are some old raspberries. And I'm thinking of trying to replant these. To see if I get any shoots off the roots once they go back in. Um, if not, then I can take them back out again and I've lost nothing. This is Gordon's Loganbury. So this is going to go in the bed. And um, yeah, we'll see if we can get any fruit off it. So that's that. This is the fruit cage. Now this was a disaster, a complete disaster. I hardly got any fruit because the birds got most of it. I did get quite a few wild raspberries, but it rained and I never got a chance to come out and harvest them. But they are very sweet. They're lovely. Um, yeah, autumn's here already for the black currants, but they need sorting out. Um, as I say, I haven't pruned them or done anything to them for ages, but this tree here, this is the hornbeam. It's got so tall, it's just blocking all the light. So it really, really needs sorting out so that I can let the light back in to be able to get some good fruit next year. So all of this needs sorting out. Um, there is brambles. There's a fern in here. There is gooseberries in here that Gordon planted. Um, it's just a right mess, an absolute right mess. So it really does need a good source house. This is Stripe's agility run here. He's got his hoop and he's got his hurdles. So I want to be able to source it out for him as well so he can play here. Um, it goes all the way back here to the chickens. So it's quite a good size. It's probably about four or five metres long. So, yeah, there's a lot of fruit in here, so I really need to get this sorted out. The chicken tunnel is going to come out from there, and then it's going to come along here a bit, go through the hedge, and then go along the path. So, yeah, it really needs sorting out, so I can sort that out as well. I can get rid of that stupid little tractor thing that I have to drag around the place then. So, yeah, that's this part of the garden. But there's red currants, there's black currants. Um, I don't have a white currant at the moment, I don't think. I would like a white currant. I did used to have one called White Versailles, which is a good wine making one. Um, but I'm not sure if that's still in the garden. I think it might be up the top of the garden up there, where um, up that part of the garden where the roses are. So, yeah. Now, this is the part I want to sort out today while Stripe's in bed. Um, I've got rhubarb at the back there, which didn't see the light of day this year. It just got completely swamped with the weeds with all the rain that we've had. Believe it or not, I tidied this about two weeks ago. And this is the result again. Just weeds everywhere. I have black plastic over it. Unfortunately, the rats got underneath to shelter from the rain. So the plastic had to go. And then this is what's grown over the top. So I want to get rid of all this. Um, I've got some sweet corn plants to go in, so I'm hoping to, if we get a late summer, that um, I'll be able to get some uh, late sweet corn. I've got some artichokes, sunchokes to go in, so I'm going to put them with these here. Um, and I just really want to have a good tidy up and a good source out. I've moved Gordon's mint back here again, so I'm going to put that back on the soil here where it was. Or I might put it down there, which is where the fruit is, the herbs are at the side of the polytunnel i've got a herb bed going on down there which we're going to go and have a look at in a minute but this himalayan honeysuckle here has got far too big it's grown to about 10 foot tall it's loving the damp it's loving the wet but i'm going to move it i'm going to take it away because even though it's a good screen it blocks out the light and uh, i'm thinking of putting either another buddleia there or a philadelphus there or maybe even just some fruit i've got a couple of dwarf fruit trees the thing is, I've got the cows and they come right up to the fence here. So 
I'm a bit reluctant to put anything there that they can eat and tuck in too. So we shall see. We shall see what we put there. But I definitely want to take this out. But I'm not going to do it now because I'm waiting for the berries to uh, mature. And then I'm going to harvest the berries, make some jam, and then I'll move it. And I'm going to put that up in the secret garden of the top of the garden. If you're enjoying my video, do like and subscribe to my channel and uh, tell YouTube that you're enjoying my videos and they will push my videos out to more people so more people get to see my content. Thank you very much for all your support on Ko-fi. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for all the lovely gifts and donations that you've been giving to me over this last year, even though I haven't been putting out as much content as I would normally do. Thank you for all your support and uh, let's get on with the video. So my runner beans are doing really well. My broad beans are a complete write-off. Um, and my shallots haven't done very well either. They've got far too wet. But my uh, runner beans are doing well. I've already picked some and got them into the freezer. And there's some new pods uh, forming nicely. So there's a couple here that are nearly ready to pick. But yeah, they're doing really well. I didn't get any French beans done, but I might try and do some because it's not too late yet. I could still get some done. And there's some more runner beans here and some lovely flowers on them. Um, so they're doing really well. Um, and then in here, my potatoes are nearly ready to harvest. They're going brown. The leaves are going over. So they're nearly ready to be get picked. And so are the ones in those bags there. And then I've got more potatoes to go in that I'm going to plant for winter. And I'm going to put in for uh, Christmas. So that's my thoughts for that. Then this in here, I need to water the tomatoes I've just put in. They've started wilting already. Um, but these are the tomatoes that I planted, um, oh, July, early in the season. And they're doing really well. I've also got cucumbers in and they seem to be growing. And I've got fruits on them as well. I'll show you the fruits if I can get in. There you go. They're starting to form nicely now. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have quite a few cucumbers. I had loads last year and I had them into November last year. Um, so, yeah, I'm very pleased about that. I've got a Cape gooseberry just there. A couple more tomato plants. What I've been doing is they've been sprouting up out of the soil. Uh, that's what these are. These are cuttings. So I've just been going around and just planting them, just putting them in. Um, I've got some lovely tomatoes forming here. So I'm very pleased about that. After all the trouble I had with the rats, I do need to feed them. They've got loads of flowers. My... Um, Courgettes need watering as well. I've got some sheep poo water outside. I'm going to give them a drink today. But I've got loads of flowers coming, so I'm going to have loads of tomatoes. It's absolutely brilliant. I think these are beef steak. I'm not sure. Um, and then I've got some more tomatoes coming on this one. So I'm going to try using the leaves. I believe you can eat the leaves of the tomato plant. So I'm going to cut them and I'm going to freeze them and then I'm going to make them into something. I might dry them and make them into a tomato powder. I haven't decided yet. But uh, yeah, I'm going to also harvest this mustard and dehydrate that as well. And then I'll have a mustard flavour for putting in stir fries and that during the winter. My lettuce is nearly finished. Uh, that's going over now. But uh, yeah, it's done really well. I've been putting it in my juices, in my smoothies, on my diet. So I'm really happy about that. I've also put some sweet corn in here. Um, and put, so I'm going to put some outside because I believe you can plant it in the polytunnel and uh, yet you can get a late harvest off it. So that's what I've decided to do in here because it might be a bit late to do that outside. So I've got 10 in here. I've got five there and I've got five there and they are planted in a block. But I really need to water the tomatoes that are here. I've got some more tomato plants under here and I've got some peas as well. Um, this is my hanging frame. <laughs> For my seeds to keep the mice and the rats off and these are my onions so they didn't do too bad the rats haven't had them a lot of them have gone to seed so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut all these leaves off i'm going to freeze dehydrate them and make them into onion powder and the onions the ones that have gone to seed i'm going to chop up and i'm going to put them in the freezer so they're just here drying out so that they'll keep better and then the ones that didn't go to seed i'm going to string up and i'm going to use them uh, once they've dried out so I need to finish tidying up all the mess after the rats because the rats went on the rampage through here like an army and uh, it was a right mess it was awful but it's getting there it's getting a lot better so that's the polytunnel this is just a whistle stop tour today 
Um, I'm not going to show you any working stuff because I've got far too much to do. Uh, but along here, this is coming down on really, really well. This is the side of the polytunnel now. And uh, yeah, it's doing fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I'm really pleased with it. This Budley is beautiful. We haven't had many butterflies this year. I've seen a handful and that's about it. Another one of that pink flower. I've got quite a bit of that. I've got an Ikea berry to go here. This is where my water bin was, but I've pinched that for uh, compost in my dog poo. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put the Ikea berry here and then I can keep an eye on that from the birds. This is a rose that I got from Charlie's. Isn't it beautiful? It's got a lovely centre. Um, and this is a climbing rose and it's going to grow up the fence here. Um, this side here is now my herb bed. I've got my comfrey here and I've got a rose on there. Um, that one is Rambling Rector on there. And then along here, this is my herbs and my messy bit. They just Things just grow up. They just sprout up. I just leave them and then I harvest them. So I've got a sweet pea to go in. This is a perennial sweet pea. Um, and that's done really well over there this year. But I've just left it. I haven't bothered harvesting the flowers. There are some flowers on the top there. But there's been very few flowers for the bees. So I've just left things as they are. Um, I've got some herbs to go in. I've got some strawberries to go in. I've got some, uh, I think this is winter savoury. I've got some, I think that's thyme. I've got some marjoram. And down here, I've got a French tarragon. I've got some parsley in here uh, that needs planting out. Um, that's mustard. Then I've got some perennial spinach, which I didn't know I had that in here, but that's just sprouted up by itself, so it's been left. More flowers down here. I'm going to see my rose. Isn't that beautiful? This is one I got off my brother when he was moving. And uh, he gave me some roses. Aren't they beautiful? Beautiful colour pink. It's lovely from the house. I've got two. I'm not sure if I moved one, but I did have two. But I think I've moved one down across into the garden. Um, and a lovely purple buddleia. But no butterflies. This is my Angelico. This is absolutely huge. But uh, there's the sweet pea. Whether you can see the sweet pea flower. And a beautiful clematis. Didn't know that was planted there. Isn't that beautiful? I'll show you that in a minute. But yeah, this is my Angelica. Now, I'm not sure what to do with it. I might just cut some of the leaves and uh, dry them and use them in the winter because I can believe you can use it as a herb. Um, my fennel has gone a bit bonkers. And I'm waiting for the seeds so I can harvest the seeds and use the fennel seeds for my cooking in the winter. Uh, it's a beautiful plant. Tastes delicious. Yeah, that needs staking up a bit. Got some weed in to do. Um, in here as well, I've got some chamomile for tea. Um, so I can harvest the flowers to put in my tea. I've also got another winter savoury here. Um, Just trying to see what else I've got. I've got some spinach. There's some spinach here. As I say, I just put the soil in out of the compost bin. And um, yeah, it's just all decided to grow by itself. So I just leave it. Um, what else have I got? Empty pots. <laughs> oh, I've got a rhubarb to go in as well. So I thought I'd put that in there. This one here. Um, bought it for three seventy five off the, from the local community shop. So yeah, it just all needs tidying up. It all needs sorting out. It was clear, but then we had a load of rain and I didn't manage to get back out again. And story of my life, it just ends up getting full of weeds and nettles. So I need to clean that out. The next spot that we're going to have a look at is the bit at the back of the uh, polytunnel. And that's this bit here. I have been through with the strimmer. I wasn't sure if there was rats getting in here, so I cleaned all this out. But it's absolutely full of brambles and nettles, so I need to get in, need to clear it. I have been up the top part over there with the strimmer. Um, but yeah, it's just doing its own thing, so I need to stop it doing its own thing. And uh, get it under control. Oh, look! Oh, it's 
just gone. There was a butterfly on that. A red admiral. Lovely. Right, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, yeah, if we go around here, as I say, it's getting a bit overgrown. It needs sorting out. Um, I've got some willow along here, basket willow. And I've also got a Virginia creeper as well, which is going to grow along the fence and uh, hopefully keep all these weeds out. That's what this is for, by the way, because there's bramble and all sorts on the other side of the field fence. And it would just be an awful lot easier for me if I've got this on here. I'll keep a lot of it out and it'll be easier to keep on top of. But as you can see, I've been through with the strimmer. My brother gave me an electric strimmer. I've been through with that. Our septic tank drain is under here somewhere, so I need to get all this cleared so I can find the drain and uh, we can keep all the brambles and everything else. So this is a work in progress for this week because there's a lot of dog toys hidden in here. We keep throwing them over the wall, trying to throw them for the dog. We miss, they go over the wall and they end up in here. So Stripe's going to have an awful lot of toys to come when uh, they come back. Look at all those blackberries there. I'm going to leave that and uh, harvest the blackberries before I pick it. So, yeah. So as you can see, there's a lot to do. There's always a lot to do here. But then there's the, hold on a sec. There's the polytunnel, the other side. So I've got a door there. So I'm going to come out and this is going to be all new beds for the Victory Garden for next year. Look at that lovely hedge line. Doesn't it look lovely? With that lovely pink rose in the distance. There you go. Right, so that is my whistle stop tour of the Victory Garden. I haven't forgotten about the Victory Garden. I am going to get stuck into that this week. I've got a bit more to do on the chickens, but once I've done that, I'm going to get to work on this because I've got to try and plan my jobs between having the dog out of his crate and having the dog in his crate. So he's due to come out in about 10 or 15 minutes. So I can play with him in the Victory Garden while I'm doing the border that I just showed you, the bit I want to get cleared. And I've got leeks to go in, I've got artichokes to go in. I'm going to sow some seeds and I'm going to do some late season peas. I'm going to do beetroot, carrots. So yeah, I might take that up on the yard now and go and do that because I want to rebuild my hanging things that are hanging above where the tomatoes are in the polytunnel and use that for my seeds. And that's going to keep the rats off because they can't get up to it. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be a lot easier. So I'm hoping that that's going to keep the mice, mice and the rats out and that I'll be able to get some, some food. Because what I was finding was when I had them on the benches, the uh, mice were getting in through the top of the propagator, through the holes in the top of the propagator and munching all my seeds. And I was wondering why I wasn't getting anything. And that was why. So, yeah, I went in one day and I planted a load of sunflower seeds to have sunflowers in the garden uh, that my brother gave me. And, uh, yeah, found all the seed husks on the top of the soil in the propagator. They'd been in and munched a lot and left the seed husks on the top, hadn't they? So, hey ho, such is life living in the countryside, not complaining. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get in and I'm going to go and sort my dog out and get my seeds out. And I think that's what I'm going to do this afternoon while he's up. I'm going to go and get my seeds sown and see what we can do for the winter. So I'll pop the camera on, show you what I'm sowing and uh, that'll be in an upcoming video. So I'll see you in the next video at the weekend and... Uh, I'm going to be showing you the progress on the secret garden, I think, on Sunday and let you have a look at that. Don't forget the roses video is still to come at the end of the month on the bank holiday weekend. And we'll do that as a gardening special. If you have enjoyed my video, do like and subscribe. Do hit that notification bell and that'll tell you when you upload new videos. I do have a Kofi account if you'd like to buy me a coffee, the girls or strife a treat. And also support the running of this channel so I can make more videos and get them out to you. Uh, my Kofi link is in the description bar below for you. And where you can find me on social media and my other YouTube channels is also in the description bar below. So I hope you've enjoyed my video. If you have, I'll see you. Do, as I say, do like and subscribe and that will keep you up to date. And it will also tell YouTube that you're enjoying my videos so more people can see them as well. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video on Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Bye bye.